one of those days that you know will happen, but you almost kind of wish we never would, don't you? Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome back to the channel. And today it's, um, well, it's quite a simple one, really. Um, this is just my thoughts and my memories um, after the, the, the passing of the, the great Murray Walker on Saturday at the age of 97. Um, I remember, you know, seeing the news, hearing about it, and my initial reaction was, oh, no, I just, you know, that sink into the heart, because as much as I never met Murray, obviously, I never knew him personally, at the same time, I, I feel like I did, you know, it's... um. He was the voice of my childhood. Um, he was one of the main reasons I wanted to look at or try doing journalism, commentary. I remember trying to mimic some of his commentaries. I would record myself on an old cassette tape, see if you can remember what those are, um, and play it back. And, you know, there's been such an outpouring of fond memories. I mean, nobody's got a bad word to say about Murray, and it's not surprising, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. He just strikes you as that kind of person, doesn't he? But, yeah, um, you know, a hell of a life he's always had. And, um, you know, through the war, tank commander, he's an advertising slogan. He would say that's his real job was advertisement. <laughs> You know, the Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. That was Murray. Murray came, was, you know, came up with that part of the scenarios that came up with that. And um, he would always say commentary was his, his second job. So he would. And, um, you know, it's 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 crazy to think that, you know, we, one of his first commentaries was just after the war. It was in terms of Formula One or what would become Formula One. It was, if I remember rightly, 1949 British Grand Prix. And they would always do bits, you know, like motorcycle racing and rallycross, etc. And then he would hit the, the F1 coverage on the BBC in 1976. You know, he had partnerships with James Hunt, which was a, a memorable sort of love-hate relationship, you could almost say, because they were two very different styles. Um, muddy that pants on fire on the balls of his feet, he would actually stand up in the commentary box and he would get excited about everything. And then you had James who would just be sitting there in the seat, just be like, whatever. <laughs> it was such an odd couple, but it worked. Um, I didn't get much of that myself, but I love still watching back over the old ones. Like a lot of people from that you'll see on YouTube or on Twitter are Quite a lot of people will remember more his partnership in the, his later years with Martin Brundle uh, from 97 till he retired in 2001. And that was definitely a really good one as well. Martin brought a lot of insight that, you know, it's a driver that Murray couldn't do. And it was a really, really good one. But what made Murray so good for me is it, it was that genuine excitement, that genuine enthusiasm for the sport. He would go and find out as much as he could and although he would make mistakes, um, the Murrayisms as I'm known as, and some of them are brilliant as we know, his voice was the voice of F1 and that made even the mistakes were memorable. You know, he would even say, um, I don't make mistakes, I make prophecies that turn out to be instantly false. <laughs> Something along those lines, he said. And for me, Murray was, as I say, he was, he was the voice in my childhood. Um, I started watching Formula One motor racing and one of my earliest life memories, never mind one of my earliest, you know, motorsport memories, one of my earliest life memories is watching the Monaco Grand Prix in 1992 with my dad. That fantastic battle at the end of the race between Senna and Mansell. Um, 
that's one of my earliest life memories. And then as the years go on, you know, it's it's evolved. I'm still watching it now, and I'll probably still be watching it when I uh, come to the end of my life. You know, it's just a huge part of my life, Formula One and motorsport. And Murray was a huge part of that when I was growing up. His his voice made even the most boring races sound exciting. It kept you on your toes. It kept you entertained. And that's what he did for me better than almost anybody, to be fair. I mean, there's so many good commentators out there. You, you know, people give David Croft a lot of a lot of grief. He is a good commentator and he's on right. Martin Brundle's done great. You know, ben Edwards, you know, all, all those kind of guys and motorsport you then move into like football you had the likes of John Motson at that time as well on the BBC match of the day and things like that there's so many good ones and he was the voice of motorsport and it's not just here in the UK obviously the, the syndicated coverage for UK speaking went out to pretty much every country in what is the commonwealth so Canada Australia New Zealand all places like that you know it's he's such a revered person in the motorsport world that he was one of the few people who could walk into any garage, any motorhome at any time and not be stopped. Such was the level of respect that he had for everybody and the level of respect that everybody gave him. You know, it really was something you don't really see. And yeah, just the fact that he's gone will never hear his opinion now on you know what's happening now um because even at 97 although he was obviously getting older in life he was still as sharp as anything when it came to motorsport he was still there on the ball just whatever you could ask him he knew it was just he had an opinion it was a very well thought out and eloquent opinion as well just fantastic and even after he retired in 2001 he came back he'd done a one-off in 2007's european grand prix for bbc5 live go listen to it it's on youtube to search for it and it is um even then six years after his retirement he was still there on the ball knew what was going on the odd small mistake that you can do obviously but that race had a lot going on let's be fair but you know, a lot of people remember him for, as I say earlier, the Murrayisms. Things like, there's nothing wrong with that car except it's on fire. <laughs> Which is just typical Murray. <laughs> um, I'm ready to stop my start watch. <laughs> Do my eyes deceive me or is Senna's car sounding a bit rough? And obviously, the one I remember so much is... Damon Hill winning the championship in 96 and now I've got to stop because I've got a lump in my throat and for Murray that was genuine obviously because he had a connection to Damon, commentated on his dad growing up and I remember being up watching that race. I would have been about eight year old, nearly nine year old at that time. I would have been up at four in the morning I think it would have been to watch that on BBC at that time, I got up and watched the races, no matter what time they were on at, if they were on stupid hours. And Murray was part of the reason you'd get up to watch it, because he was just so goddamn entertaining. And there'll, there'll never be another Murray Walker. There never will be. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's sad that he's gone, but you know, we can take comfort and joy from the fact that we got to experience a, a great man who was amazing at his craft and, and learn from that and enjoy the, the entertainment that's came from it. It's as simple as that. But Murray will always be number one for me. I, I don't think it will ever, ever change as I go through life. Murray is just the man when it comes to, to F1 commentary and um, yeah you you might be able to hear my voice there's a bit of sadness and that's because he was as I say a big part of my childhood he was my childhood in some degree 
because I was so into Formula One and motorsport as a whole. So, you know, the, the fact that he's, he's now left us is, is sad and there'll never be another Murray Walker. It's that simple. But, of course, you know, condolences and, and thoughts go to you know, his family, you know, his, his long-standing wife, Elizabeth. They married in 1955. Um, and he was just... He was a hell of a man. And, you know, for me, he should have been Sir Murray Walker for services to motorsport. Should always have been that. But thinking of it over these last couple of days, I wouldn't be surprised if it was offered to him and he turned it down. That just sounds like money. <laughs> and it's, um, yeah. Voice of F1 always and forever, as far as I'm concerned. That's for sure. But it may be goodbye, but it will always be never forgotten. That's an absolute fact. And if it wasn't for Murray, I wouldn't be doing these videos. I wouldn't have been doing commentaries I've done in the past. And will likely do again in the future. I wouldn't have tried to go to do a journalism course at college. Murray is a big part of why I wanted to do that kind of stuff. And he's a big reason for why I still chase that dream to some degree, even now. So, all I can say to that is, thank you, Murray. Thank you for giving me this dream and giving me this entertainment through my life and bringing me onto this sport that is Formula One and motorsport that a lot of us watching this love and enjoy. Thank you. But with that, thank you for listening. I just, I had to put a little something up about such a great man. Till next time. It's not goodbye, it is just that, next time. But Murray, goodbye, and thank you. <laughs>